What is the low light difference or ISO noise comparison between these two cameras, the Sony a6400 and the Canon EOS M6 Mark II? Hey guys, welcome. My name is Bilal Khan, marketing by profession, media by passion. Coming at you from Dallas, Texas. I'm here on a work trip from Houston. I'm borrowing my friend's Sony a6400 uh, and I want to compare it to my Canon M6 Mark II. Uh, really the thing that I'm curious about is understanding and knowing uh, the differences in ISO performance. I know the Canon M6 Mark II has a 1.6x crop in relation to a full frame camera that, um, you know, that big cameras have. Now the thing is, there's a difference between both of these cameras. Um, 1.6x crop, 1.5x crop. The sensor and the video on this camera is actually taking a 6K image. It's a 6K sensor, it's taking a 6K image and is down sampling it to 4K essentially. Whereas on this camera, it's really taking like maybe a 3K image and it's up resing it or up sampling it if that's the actual term to a 4k image so there's going to be a difference in, uh, in in image so what i want to do I want, I want to see does that really make a difference especially when it comes to making content for online uh first i'm going to start off with the canon m6 mark ii and then we're going to go on to the a6400 um, and then what i'll do I'll, I'll play them back side to side and so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount the sigma 18 to 35 i have a metal bones uh e mount uh to or ef mount to e mount adapter and for the canon i have a, a clean uh pass through um Oh, just a basic uh, photo deox uh, EF to EFM uh, adapter. Uh, both of them have electronic components, so the data kind of passes through. Uh, what's interesting is that the Metabones doesn't allow for continuous autofocus on the A6400, although a Sigma MC11 probably would. So, but this is not the scope of that video. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cycle through the different ISOs all the way to the max value, just to maintain the ISO or to see that the noise levels, I'm gonna make adjustments on the lens itself. So I might just keep turning up the, uh, um, opening up or closing up the aperture while the ISO goes on because I'm gonna to try to simulate the kind of settings and situation that we're in. So let's get on with the show. Right now I am on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Uh, right now what I've done is kind of lit myself to expose for the lighting in the background um, My face is generally going to be really really dark and if I were in a situation where um, uh, I'm, I'm lit like this and I want to expose for the highlights and whatnot This is what it would look like and then what I would do is I would raise the shadows in the edit This is the kind of noise that would exist if the shadow in terms of the noise in the shadows at ISO 100 on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II so now let's bump it up one, let's go to ISO 200. This is where we're at. Um, ISO 200, um, now let's raise the shadows to, in terms of the edit, this is what the noise looks like. Now, if I were to, what in this scenario, one of the things that you could do, I'm at shutter one over 50, uh, I, might, I might bring it to like one over, uh, one over 25, uh, or even one over 30. Uh, uh, now, so when I do the shutter, you'll notice that my hand has a lot more uh, of a blur. As I increase the um, uh, the ISO settings and whatnot, what I'm going to do is I'll probably also increase the shutter speed. Uh, and so you'll see there's going to be a little bit more, uh, less blur happening. Now, ISO 400, this is what it looks like. I will probably keep it here for the indoor setting at f1.8. Uh, and I'm not going beyond f1.8 because most people, uh, now, uh, yeah, most people, if they're in an indoor setting, they want to be able to isolate the background as much as possible, get that blurry background and whatnot. Uh, and so for that reason, I uh, figured just uh, keep it wide open. Now, ISO 800. Uh, and so this is really, really bright. So let's make some adjustments. Let's uh, bump the ISO to 1 over 60, 1 over 80. Um, maybe even more. Let's go to one over tw one twenty-five. You'll notice, right? This uh, there, there's not even that much motion blur anymore. Uh, so let's go back to now we're ISO uh, eight hundred. 
raising the shadows. Um, now, ISO 1600. Now, I know on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, um, I could probably go to 1600, 3200, and it'll still be pretty good. I'm gonna also adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Now, I'm at one over 250, <laughs> and you'll notice the lights in the background uh, start flickering. Um, so let me just, uh, uh, it doesn't matter if I turn this thing or not, it, it's gonna flicker anyway. Uh, so now let's go to ISO. Oh yeah, so raise the shadows. This is what it looks like. ISO 3200, boom. And now uh, bump the shutter speed again. Let's go to one over uh, 500, boom. Like super, we're like looking like uh, we're in the uh, arena of a gladiator in terms of the super high shutter speed. I just need uh, uh, Maximus and shield and all that. And I'll be looking like I'm fighting in the arena. And so we have now ISO 6400. And um, uh, this is now also shutter speed one over 1000. Boom, right? Now we go to, oh yeah, raising the shadows in terms of noise levels. Uh, now we go to ISO 1200, I mean 12,800, 12,800 on the EOS M6 Mark II. And, uh, and if you're wondering, I'm just using the, uh, I'm just using the app uh, to control. Uh, and so now uh, let's uh, bump up the uh, shutter speed again, one out, one over 2000. How's the, uh, how's the movement? Am I, am I looking like super jittery? <laughs> um, and now for the last bit, which is now uh, enhanced, uh, we're at 1, 25,600. I think this is the max of extended ISO on the M6 Mark II. And let's also bump this up in terms of ISO one out, one over 4,000. This is gonna be super, um, right? Just as a quick tip, if you wanted to keep your, um, uh, shutter speed down. So if I were to bring this all the way down to like say one over 60 or even one over 50, well, everything is blown out. And so this is why you would close down the, sh uh, uh, close down the uh, aperture. Now we're at uh, F11 and F16 and you'll notice everything is just like super sharp in the background. Um, and that's how this stuff functions. So again, it's, it's a choice that you need to make when you're, when you're dealing with a lot of light is you either, if you turn your ISO down all the way, but you want to turn things, uh, but you still want to secure things, then you can adjust your aperture, which is your f-stop, what I call light friction or photonic friction. Um, the more photonic friction exists, the less of the blurry background um, exists. So it'll be more things in focus. Uh, the less photonic friction, so f1.8, boom, you're letting all the light hit the sensor. Um, and so, but if you want to let all the light hit the sensor, um, but things are still bright, but in the end you want that blurry background, you just bump the uh, shutter speed all the way up as high as it can go, and this is what you end up with. So, uh, this is with the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Now, let's just go ahead and swap the camera, keeping this lens, and with the Sony A6400. We are on the Sony a6400 with the same Sigma 18 to 35 lens, set to photonic friction f1.8 uh, with a shutter speed of one over 50. And we'll be following the same process with this one where I'm gonna be bumping up the ISO levels from ISO 100, which is where we are at right now. Picture profile, now this is one of the advantages of, um, one of the, advantages of uh, the Sony is that it's a little bit more friendly in the area of video uh, where it will allow you to select different picture profile custom profiles in terms of hybrid log gamma s log and things like that so right now i'm actually in hlg hybrid log gamma tres, three and so whereas the canon it doesn't have any of those options however it uh my assumption and this is something i'll find out in the editing is that uh, canon is pretty well in the edit in terms of raising the highlights so long as you have exposed for the light in the background so same setting as before 
dimly lit scenario, indoor settings, um, sort of exposed, I can see zebras and everything. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, Canon, you don't really get zebras and whatnot. Uh, focus peaking. <laughs> Actually, you do get focus peaking on Canon, but it's, um, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I got the windows, I got the background light, laptop screen lighting my face. And so now uh, this is ISO 100, 150, f1.8. Now this is ISO 200. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to also bump up the uh, shutter speed to, uh, let's see here, to 1 over, say, 80. Boom. Yeah. So we go from 150, 1 over 80. This is what it looks like. Um, now, let's uh, bump up the ISO again from 200. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, before I bump it up from here, this is what it looks like with the shadows raised. Okay. Now. Let's go to, um, so here's where we're at. Now let's bump up the shutter speed as well. One over 25. I believe this is the same setting that I had um, when I was on the, uh, on the Canon. Um, raising the shadows. Now let's go to ISO 800. So here we are. Now, if you're wondering why isn't the thing auto-focusing is because I don't have the appropriate adapter. I have a Metabones adapter on the, uh, um, uh, on the a6400 with an EF mount Sigma lens and so the appropriate thing would be to get the MC11 but I don't have that so for now we're gonna go with manual focus and so um, but yeah this is now let's just bump up the ice uh, not the ISO but the uh, shutter speed to say 1 over 60 or maybe 1 over 250 boom um, this is what it would look like now you'll notice the um, the lights in the background flickering, uh, tube lights, that's what you get. So raising the shadows. And uh, now let's bump up the ISO settings again, eight, from 800 to 1600. And uh, let's also now uh, change the shutter speed. So we went to 320, 250, let's see, one over 400. Um, yeah, this is where we're at. Um, raising the shadows again. And now let's bump up to ISO, go straight to 3200. And that's the other thing I realized with the A6400 on the Sony, you have a lot more ISO options between the doubling. So on the Canon, you see you have, you're going from like, you know, 100 to 200. Now there might be a little bit of space in between, but here you got all the numbers kind of laid out right in front of you. So also let's uh, bump up the uh, shutter speed to the one over 800. This is kind of like we were at before, raising the shadows, okay? And um, now let's bump up the ISO again, 6400, bam. So ISO 6400, um, things are still looking pretty decent, at least to me on the camera. And this is where the differences should kick in. So let's uh, let's boost the shutter speed and now raise the shadows. Uh, this is where I believe there's going to be a difference. It still looks pretty clean to me. It looked clean on the Canon. I didn't really know. I wouldn't notice it unless I bring it into the editor. Um, so now let's bump off the ISO again. Now this is where it would get really noisy on the Canon for sure without a doubt and now let's uh, bump up the shutter speed again raising the shadows and or rather in, in in the case of the sony i would do less raising of the shadows and more of you know processing the hlg footage to kind of make it uh, clean Twenty-five thousand six hundred. and now uh this is basically the max of the canon eos m6 mark ii and let's also bump up the shutter speed to the max value all the way to 4000 just like on the canon eos m6 mark ii uh, and so this is where we're at how's the noise looking how do you um how much how do you like it how does it compare side by side